In this video, we will discuss what are plasmids. We'll discuss what are the different components of plasmids. We'll take the example of bacterial plasmids. There are n number of plasmids. And one of the important plasmids that is being used in genetic engineering are the pet vectors. So let's start with the plasmid components. There are different, different components. First important component of the plasmid is promoter sequence. The role of promoter sequence is to allow RNA polymerase to bind to that particular region of the plasmid. Because of that, it starts the protein expression. This is the first component. You need to remember that the promoter is the important region where RNA polymerase binds. Now, next is the, in green color, as you can see here, next component, which is RE sites. RE means restriction enzyme sites, restriction uh, endonucleases enzyme sites. So there are specific regions in the plasmid where restriction enzymes specifically can make a cut. So the role of these sites will be to cut the, the DNA sequence. The enzyme will cut the DNA sequence and because of these sites you can insert a gene. So molecular cloning is incomplete without having restriction endonuclease sites. They are also known as multiple cloning sites. Now, what is the third region? As you can see here in blue color, I'm trying to show you origin of replication region. In short, ORI, it's also known as origin of replication. So this is the region where you have the DNA sequence responsible for the replication of the plasmid inside the host. So suppose if you have a bacterial plasmid, the sequence will be specific for the bacteria so that plasmid can replicate inside that host cell. So this is the third region. The fourth region, which is one of the important region of the plasmid, which is the selectable marker region. Selectable marker region is the region where the plasmid is going to produce a specific protein that will allow the plasmid to grow on a specific media. For example, I can say in this case, maybe you have ampicillin resistance gene as a selectable marker. So to select the host that carry the plasmid, you need a specific characteristic. Example, I'm giving AMPR, which is ampicillin resistance gene. And because of this gene, bacteria is going to grow on the media containing ampicillin. So as I have mentioned already, we have ORI, we have selectable marker region. We also have LAC-Z region. And LAC-Z allows you to Specifically, that particular gene allows you to produce or allows the host to produce beta-galactosidase protein. And this protein is specifically, if I say this particular protein is an enzyme responsible for the blue-green blue, blue colored colonies on the media containing XCAL. When you have this particular enzyme in a functional state, the colonies are going to appear blue in color or you can say green in color. If the enzyme is disrupted or it's non-functional, you're going to have white colored colonies. And now if you try to insert a gene in the multiple cloning sites inside the LACG region, then with the insertion, you're going to disrupt the enzyme sequence and DNA sequence of the enzyme and then there will be non-functional protein expressed. So the cloning will indicate that the LAG-Z gene is disrupted. That is why you're going to have white colored colonies. After you complete your cloning protocol, there is a, there is a need to do PCR reaction. You can't just randomly select white colonies because there is a good chance that you can get negative, false negative or false positive results. That's why you perform, you specifically need to perform polymerase chain reaction to confirm the results. So this was 
a brief introduction about plasmid components. This was a brief introduction about the plasmids. We're going to cover more topics in this lecture series. So if you like these videos, then please stay tuned to the channel and show your support. Thank you.